Okay, looks like we're recording. So welcome again. This is our Nature's Notebook Observation Deck Refresher. We try to do this once a year in the spring in case there are new people to Nature's Notebook who haven't really used the online interface. So that will be our focus today is just how to get things set up online and where to find some of the resources that we've got on the website. And um, we can, at a later date, do another overview of a little bit more complicated things like the protocols and some questions about general observing. But if you do have questions about that, feel free to ask us while we're here online. I want to introduce our team to you today. We have Sarah, as I already introduced to you. She's a web designer and developer. And then me, I'm the education coordinator. And then we have a third person on our communication and outreach team, Erin Posthumus. So probably you've seen some emails or gotten some information from her as well. So we are the three folks that do our education and outreach for you. And just before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody oops, is on the same page about phenology. So here is the definition that we use when we describe phenology. It's the science of the seasons. It has to do with hibernation and migration and blooms and buds in nature. It's something that's very easy to observe. And the technical definition that we use is there on the screen. It's called, it's the study of the timing of recurring plant and animal life cycle stages or phenophases and their relationship to environmental conditions. And that's why phenology is something that's really important to understanding how our species on our planet are responding to seasonal and environmental long-term change. The National Phenology Network, which is our organization, has been developed to create a standardized place for people to collect and share phenology observations and phenology data. And we've developed this over the last 10 years or so to become a place where people can contribute observations and they can also extract any data that they are contributing and you can see everyone else's data in there. Secondarily, we also have an education and outreach goal to encourage people of all ages and backgrounds to observe and record phenology. And the way that we do that, of course, is through our Nature's Notebook Citizen Science Program. <laughs> and even though it's a citizen science program, we do have a number of researchers and scientists who are also contributing to it. So all of our information goes in through the database that way, and it's extracted through one of our many visualization or download data tools. As of right now, this is the shape of our data. I just pulled this information down this morning. So today we have 9,000 active observers who are observing at 9,000 sites. And that just means they've submitted one or more observations in their location. We just uploaded a brand new suite of species for the 2017 season. So we're up to about 1,200 species total, plants and animals. And a third of those are animals, and two thirds of those are plants. So you probably will be able to find something near you to observe, at least probably 10 things that you might be able to observe in a location near you. Our database right now is up to 9.4 million observation records. And we have lilac data in our data set dating back to 1956. And that data set is what was used to develop some of the models, like the map that I was showing you on the first screen. This is an example of what our protocols look like. These are all of the different things that you can capture information on in our database. So we encourage long-term monitoring of the same individual plants at a site. That's what really gives us detailed information about the phenology at that location. We also allow you to capture whether you see something or whether you don't see something. Not seeing something is equally as important as seeing something because anybody that's an end user of the data can then get a better sense of when those phenophases began and ended. It's also important for species that may go through those phenophases more than one time during the year. So consistent long-term data observation is really important to giving us a clear picture of what's happening in nature. We ask that people usually collect observations at least weekly so they can catch that first yes, the first time they see that in the season. And sometimes you might be unprepared for that as you know that the spring season is advancing pretty early and quickly on the East Coast. So you want to make sure that you've got your observers out there ready to catch that first yes. 
And during the growing season, if you can, it would be great to observe more frequently than weekly, just so that we can have as much information available as possible in the data set. We also have the ability for people to say that they don't know. It's okay to say you don't know if you're not sure what you're looking at. You don't have to answer something for every single one of those phenophases. You don't have to say yes or no. We'd rather people put a placeholder in there and tell us that they don't know if they see breaking leaf buds and then maybe go back and do a little bit more research to find out exactly what that looks like instead of making a guess. And in general, if you want to capture the broad phenophase categories for plants, for example, you can just tell us whether or not you see leaves, whether or not you see open flowers, and whether or not you see fruits or ripe fruits. Those are the easiest thing to observe. And we have pretty detailed protocols that tell you exactly what you're, you should be looking for on the plant. The same thing is true for animals. Our database is a little bit different because it doesn't just capture whether or not you see something, an animal at a site, but it gives you more opportunity to tell us about what that individual is doing. So on this data sheet, you can see we're asking for active individuals, whether or not they're feeding or mating. And then that gives them a better picture of what's happening with that animal in the environment. And this is just an example of what our data can tell somebody who's an end user. You can see that the phenophases for a deciduous plant are overlapping with each other. As you might imagine, there might be leaves, flowers, and fruits occurring at the same time on a particular species. And then also having that animal data in there tells us a little bit more detailed when they might be visiting plants, uh, if that is their food source. So it gives you a really clear picture of what's going on in the ecosystem. We also are now having people use our data a lot more frequently now that we're beginning to build up a big data set. And on our website, we have examples of uh, vignettes where you can look and see what the data are telling us. So that's really important to us as education and outreach people. We want to make sure that not only are people collecting observations, but they know how that information is being used in science and research. And here again is that map where we're tracking the start of the spring season across the country using models called spring leaf and bloom indices. Our maps have actually been in the news quite a bit lately from the New York Times and on NBC Today Show and the Nightly News and NPR. We've got that all collated on our website if you're interested in that information. People were really looking to see what the onset of spring was this year because it is occurring so much earlier on the East Coast as you can see in the map. And if you're interested in more detailed information about that, you can visit our website there on the bottom. It's npn.org data. Spring. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how you can set up your observations in Nature's Notebook. So there's two ways to contribute. You can contribute as a backyard observer, just one person observing at one site for at least a year or more, or you can participate with a group in your local area. And groups allow people to have multiple observers at one location contributing phenology observations on the same individual plants and animals. And this way, if somebody's not able to go out every week and do it on their own, you can organize a group of volunteers to share the workload. There is the ability to have an account administrator who can kind of manage all of those observations and observers. And this method is being used a lot by schools and botanical gardens, neighborhood phenology trails, and nature centers to capture phenological information at their site. The other thing that is happening with those types of organizations is many times they have their own science, research, or uh, education question that they're trying to answer by organizing those observers. And this is one way to really get that information and use it locally and tell your observers who you're working with in your community what the phenology of the particular species you've chosen are telling everyone. Right now we have over 400 active partner sites. So you can either join a partner site or, again, contribute observations in your backyard. Um, for more information, there's our website there on the bottom. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sarah, who will give us a demo of the Nature's Notebook interface and data entry system. So let me see. Do I need to give you the presenting ability?
Okay. All right, everybody. I do have a quick poll here. Just wanted to get a feel for what everybody's experience using Nature's Notebook is. Nice. Okay. It looks like most people are falling in the beginning or intermediate category. There are several people who haven't used Nature's Notebook yet, so that's good. And several people who have been using Nature's Notebook for a long time. It's actually pretty evenly split. All right. <laughs> so there we have it. Well, I hope we can answer everybody's questions, um, get the new users set up, as well as answer any questions our continuing observers may have. So we will start from the very beginning. And again, like Lorian said, if you have a question at any time, just chat that in and we will try and get that answered. If not now, we will save questions for the end. All right, so we will get started. You've got your login and many of you probably already have your login, so you may have to type it in or your computer remembers it. So you logged in, you're back here at the website and you can go over here to my observation deck. If you're going into enter, enter your observations, it takes a moment to load here because we have this feature called our phenology calendar where it is going to the database, fetching data from your own account, your own observations, and loading something related to what you're, you've been seeing. Um, you can also customize your own calendar. We'll go over that in a bit towards the end, but for now we'll go right to setting up observations. So when you scroll down here to your observate, the bottom of your observation deck, you will get a list of four columns. In this far left column, you will see your site. Now, you, if you're a participant who is signed up with a group site, your group site will load on default. So if you're seeing one of your sites, your group sites here, it's up there, but there the calendar loaded up top, so you can see some information there. So you'll see your groups here, and if you're an observer at multiple groups, you can click the, the link and see all the groups you're a part of. Now, I'm not actually observing at all these groups, but I do help out with troubleshooting, so I join groups to see what's really going on behind the scenes. So you can find the group that you're wanting to observe at at your location, or if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list, you have my site. Now, these are your personal sites. If you've set one up in your backyard or at your office, any of those are personal. Now these sites are only seen by you and you are the only one that can contribute data to them. You can also add another site, your own personal site. If you've only been observing at a group and you wanna do it at home, you can go right over here to add a personal site. So we'll set this up for those of you who may not have this started yet. So you get over here to this map. You can either zoom in, drag and drop, find your location on the map. We're gonna zoom in here, we're in Tucson. So we'll go find something here in Tucson. There's the University of Arizona. So you can drag and drop a pin or if you know the street address, you can type it here at the top. Um, then you need to name your site. So we'll just say this is a test site since we're not really going to use this test site. And then you scroll down a bit. We ask the USGS Elevation Service fills in the latitude and the longitude as well as the elevation. So you don't need to worry about that. Then we do ask some additional site information. We have a little pop-up question that explains what we're actually what you're actually answering if you needed more clarification based on the type of site, um, any type of questions about the area itself, you have the option to leave this blank if that's if that you feel more comfortable with that. But the more information we have, the better we can inform our data output users. You can also answer questions about the plants, such as the, this, the slope or animals, if there's any water present. So you can save those informations, you could say, let's say there's probably a bird feeder nest. There's probably some stray cats running around the university, let's be honest. 
You can add comments in the field, type those in if you have extra information not answered in the questions above, and then create a site. It will save up. Oh, I must already have a test site. So if you've got an error message here at top, that you already have that site named, you'll need to make a unique site. So if you already have a home, it won't let you save a home again. So, All right. So webinar test site, that's pretty unique. We'll save that one. Create your site. Now it's adding that location to the database and linking it to your account. So it may take a moment. Depending on your internet speed, it could be faster or slower. And it brings you back to your observation deck. So you can see down here at the bottom, we've got webinar test site. Now there's nothing to, there's no link to enter data yet because we have to add species. So you, you can come over here to this add or edit plants. And if you haven't checked your species list, you can go over here. If you're wondering what's in your area, go to the Observe tab, scroll down to the Plants and Animals. You can open that in a new tab, go to this page, and sort. So there's many different ways to sort. You could sort by common name or scientific name. If you know something that you want to look for in your area, you could start typing that and then click Search. If you wanted to sort it by site or state, you could see, hmm, what's located in Arizona? You could search for the specific species if you're really interested in, say, invasives or plants or animals that are part of any of our campaigns, our Southwest Season Trackers, Shady Invaders, Nectar Connectors, Green Wave. So there are many ways to sort. You could do the same for animals, doing birds or what type of insect. We also have the option over here on the sidebar to click here to download all over 12,000 of our species in an Excel file. You can also see their states, their locations, and what type of species they are. If that's something you're interested in, you could download that file. So I sorted for Arizona, all partners, all species, and I'm going to say view all, well, let's say view 100 at a time, and then search. So it's going to go see what species are on in our database that are showing for located in Arizona. So you could go here and say, oh wow, there's a lot. Let's look, oh, Arizona walnut. So you click that, you wanted to learn more about it. This brings you to the profile page, the species profile, where you see information on the species that we've compiled for you. You'll get a states where it's located, and then you, as you scroll down, you will see definitions on the phenophases. This will give you the information you need to know what we're asking about when we say breaking leaf buds. If you want to click more, you get more information going to the FAQ specifically tied to the individual phenophases. So you can scroll down and read more on all the phenophases we ask for that species. Here's the section on flowers, open flowers, pollen release. Scrolling down, you'll see the section on fruit. We also have a couple more links here at the bottom if you wanted even more information. So you could go back to the species search page, you're seeing your Arizona species or whatever state you're located. So this is where you can get a feel for what's located in your area. And then when you're back here at your observation deck in your other tab, we're going to say we're going to add. You can add by typing the name of the species, either common or scientific. So you can say start typing and it will populate a list of possible options given the, the letters you're typing in. So here we can hover down to the Arizona walnut, click the Arizona walnut. It will automatically provide a nickname for you. You can change this name to say left of front gate or walnut one, something that helps you or your group identify the tree or bush. 
we have the option for patch monitoring. So if you hover over this question mark, you'll be given a little bit more description. Indicate you're monitoring this plant as a small area or a patch of a designated side rather than one distinct individual. This can be easier for plants where individuals are hard to distinguish like ground cover and some grasses. So if you're just doing a patch, you just check that box. Walnut's not a patch, so if you do patch monitoring, we will ask a couple size questions on here. You can change that, fill that in for yourself. Then we ask some additional questions. Again, hovering over the question mark gives you an idea of what we're looking for. The shade status, if it's wild, if it's watered, fertilized, the gender of the plant. And if you know the planting date, if it's something you planted in your own yard or you know the planting date, you can fill that in here. Otherwise, just go ahead and leave it blank. Additionally, we have the field for comments if you have any extra information to provide us. If you don't know the answer to any of these, that's perfectly fine to leave it blank. We'll say it's in full sun. I don't know if it's wild or not. I don't know. It's not watered, meaning there isn't somebody there with a watering can or a hose. It's not fertilized, and I don't know the gender. So you answer those questions, you save the plant, and you see it pops up over here on your plant list. Now you can go ahead and go back to your site, or if you wanted to add another plant, you click that add a new plant on the corner and you get taken back to this screen. So now we'll go over here, we'll add a jojoba. So you start typing and it gives you a couple options. So hovering over the, the one you want, click. Then it will give you the automatically admitted nickname. We'll say this one is in full sun as well. Don't know any of the other questions. The wild, we'll say it's not watered and it's not fertilized and don't know the gender. Sometimes you might not know the gender depending on the phenophase you're seeing the plant in. You may not know the gender. You may know it later. You can come back and edit the plant if you figure that out. But right now you don't have to answer that. So you've got your two plants on here and we'll say that's good for now. So you can go back here to your observation deck. It loads your phenophase calendar. So you have two plants showing at your observation deck. If you wanted to add an animal, you come down here, add or edit animal. And again, you either could look here on the big list, you could sort by animals in your area, or you get taken to this page where you've got the whole list. On this page, you can also sort for what's in your area. So I sorted for animals in AZ. We'll say we've got a hummingbird. So you highlight the animal, it bolds it, and you click the second link, add to checklist, and it moves it onto your checklist. Say you accidentally click something, or you click add all, uh-oh, you can click remove all, and that'll take them all off. So we're adding hummingbird, Say I accidentally added this red start and you realize, oh no, I, I clicked the wrong button or this isn't what I thought it was. You highlight it over here on your right hand side and then you just click remove. So I actually wanted to add the Anna's hummingbird. Add, there we go, I added all again. So you can go remove. Alan's hummingbird, add to checklist. Anna's hummingbird add to checklist, and then you could scroll through here, submit as many as you wanted to. Let's do the Costa's Hummingbird, add to checklist. So you can go through and select your animals, then click here to save. It saved your list. Click here to reorder. So this is if you want to change the order of your the listing that you're seeing things. Say you wanted to do the jojoba first, you could put that up on the list and say you wanted to put the Costas hummingbird first of your birds, you just select that and you can move it up. And then click submit, that'll save your list in the order that you just moved it to. You'll come here and you'll see it in your order. So then you can also print your field data sheets from this bottom link in this column. It'll give you a pop-up. Now if you're not sure what to print, you can click this link and we'll tell you. We've got some data FAQs on the data sheets as well as providing examples of everything. 
Otherwise, you go to Print. And I'm just going to say Create All Data Sheets. That way, we get a cover sheet, we get an ch animal checklist, we get the species by species, phenophase observation sheet, and the phenophase definition sheet for each species. So then you can click Create. It will generate a PDF for you that is downloading here. Depending on the number of species you have, it may take longer to download. So we'll go ahead and look at this file. Sometimes it doesn't load in the preview, so you need to go to your document. and open the PDF in your Adobe Acrobat. Oh, okay. Hmm. There must be a problem with this Adobe on this computer. So we'll see. We'll go back to that in a minute. So if you wanted to view the species profile, again, the pages that you picked the species from, this shows you the more information on each species that you have on your list. Clicking the other one. You'll also get a small picture and this scientific name. Here you can print the field data sheet, which is going to download, probably isn't going to open on this computer, or the phenophase definition sheet, which gives you more background on the species. So here from the Create Your Data Sheets, you can say that you want the phenophase definition sheet and take that out into the field with you to get a little more information on the phenophases for each specific species. Coming back to this What to Print page, we have examples. So here's what your species phenophase definition sheet looks like. Again, it has a breakdown for each of the specific categories we ask for, such as animal activity, and then asking about each of the individual phenophases we ask for, active individuals, feeding, fruit or seed consumption, calls or song, singing males, things under reproduction, mating, nest building, development, such as dead individuals or individuals that have feeder. So all of these will be different depending on the species and depending if it's plants or animals. What functional group it in, is in will have more or less phenophases. So these are great to carry out into the field with you, especially if you're getting adjusted to your new species or providing new observers with these. It just gives them a little more information to feel more comfortable with what they're looking for. Hey, Sarah, can I interrupt you for a sure. minute? We have a couple people that are asking questions about um, the groups, like if they're a member of a group, how do they create a site and how do they add that site to their group? Or um, can, maybe you can just show the difference to what it looks like between a, uh, if you're a member of a group and you can edit it, and if you're not an admin, what it looks like. Okay. And the difference between your personal sites. Okay. So that was the setup if you were setting up a personal site. It would be similar if you were setting up a group site where you would, if you were an admin for a group site. Now, some of you may be joined at a group site and you are not an administrator for the site. You would not be able to add sites, locations, or species to that site. That is up to the group administrator. Now, if you know your group administrator, you could talk to them and see if you could perhaps have them add some species. Maybe there's something you're seeing that they're not or that you're interested in, talk to whoever your group admin is, and I'm sure that they would be thrilled to hear from you. So this is a site that I am not an admin at. So I would, roll, I would come up to my observation site, join, select through my sites, come to the site, and I see the location, the Tucson Botanical Garden Phenology Walk. Now the links to add or edit are inactive. As you can see, they're blacked out. I can't do anything, but you can Scroll through the plant and animal list. See, they've got a lot going on here. And you can print your field data sheets. Again, you can select 
the cover sheet, the animal sheet, the phenophase definition sheet, the day by day, or the species by species. Now the species by species has each individual species on its own page with multiple dates allowed for each species. So you could use this for several times if you're going out repetitively. The day by day, which is another option we provide, looks like this. Now it's one date, but multiple species on one page. So if you're only going out, say you're going out on a Saturday and you just want everything on one page, you can select the day by day option. You still have the cover sheet information here, such as the time spent observing, time spent in transit, and then your phenophases for all of your species on that list. Now you may get multiple pages here. If you've got more than four species, you'll get multiple pages. So you printed your data sheets and you go out into the field. You select your information, your yes, no, or you're unsure. Then you come back to the computer and you enter your observation data here. Again, this would be the same for a personal site as well. You'd come to this enter observations page. It directly corresponds to what you're seeing on your printed data sheets. You can report on your contribution of time, animal methods, and snow. All of this information you'll find on your PDF on the cover sheet. Then you can scroll down here and see the different species that are added at your, at this is an add a group site, all the way down. Now if there's things that you're not observing, you can close those by clicking the little arrow and that will fold that tab up and you don't see it. Doing that might help with some confusion if there's multiple individuals or ones that you're not particularly observing. So you would start by filling in your date here at the top. I'm actually not going to submit data on this one because I'm not actually at the site, so I don't know what's going on, and that would be bad data. So we'll go back to the observation deck. So this is a site that I'm not an admin at. Let's go find one that I am an admin at. Now many of you may not have this option. So now I'm an admin at this Excel middle school. So I can see the site name, the site location, if I was physically at this school and that we were going to add, say, another location, you could, again, go to add a new Excel site that would take you back to that screen on the map where you could drop a pin or edit the location by typing in the street address. You could add or edit plants just as you could at a personal site, print the data sheet, sort the order they're in, view the species profile page, print the single data sheet or the single definition sheet, or for group admins, we have the Manage Users tab. Now you go over here to click Manage Users, and you can see the people in that group. You can also download the group roster or the group data as a whole, whoever submitted observations. You can select those and download just the individual data by clicking on one of the users. If they had observations, you would see a number down this download observations. The group roster will bring you a file with everybody who's a part of your group. So see this user has their observations. They have submitted 196 records. So I could download an Excel file of just that user's data. I could go through and look at that. Also, if there's somebody in your group, say you're a group admin and somebody else joins your group and you want them to be an administrator as well, you click their name on here and you could check the select box next to group admin, and that would then give them the power to add and edit to your group. So we'll go back to the observation deck. Again, you can see all those links are active for anybody who is an admin at a site, at a group site. They would be active on your personal site. You can also download all your data as a whole. This will bring a Excel file. Now this is all of your data regardless of what group you have submitted it at. This is everything that's tied to your account, 
whether it's personal observations or group site observations, you get that Excel file with all the information provided. So we'll go back to the enter observations, but I'm going to go back to the test site we created. So scrolling down to my sites, I see what's personal to me. We'll go to the webinar test site. So I've got my list of species. Say I did go out into the field, I circled yes, no, I walked through the area, I did some standing area searches for hummingbirds. I come back to my computer and I'm ready to enter my observation data. You go over here to the enter observation data. Now you can do multiple dates at one time. So if you've been out in the field, say two or three days, and then you come back and enter your data all at once, you're able to do that as well. So you don't necessarily have to come back to the computer every time after you observe. That is an option though if you liked it. So if you come here, again, starting here with the date at the top, we'll say I was out there this morning. You can click the date. Now you can leave the, just the date or clicking this little clock icon gives you the time of day. We do have it on the hour. So let's say I was out there at 9 a.m. before I came in to the office. So that'll save. Now you can do the contributions on time, animal observation, snow. So I was out there for 15 minutes. I spent five minutes walking there. Again, you can change these to hours or days if that feels better to you. Now it may take a little longer observing in the beginning when you're getting used to the species, knowing what to look for, as well as what plants to observe. As you get more versed with our program, you may be able to go a little quicker. You'll know your plants a little better. You'll know what you're looking for. So then on animal observations, let's just say I was there for five of the 15 minutes. Animal survey method. Stationary, I stood in one place and looked. Reporting on snow, there's never, hardly ever any snow on the ground here in Tucson, Arizona. No snow in the treetops, not today at least. So I can answer no. Again, if you feel uncomfortable with any of that, you can leave it blank. So now you come down here, you can see all of these lines are closed for all of my species. You could click one to open just that one or click open all here on the right hand side. Circling any of these corresponding to what you filled in on your data sheets. Now you see the date is automatically populated here at the top as well as the time if you filled that in. We see young leaves. You can answer the intensity questions here on the side. This will give you more information. Again, referring back to those phenophase definition sheets and the species profile will help you understand these questions a little more. If you don't feel comfortable with, the, fill with that, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to answer intensity. We'd rather that you submit good data than answer every question. There were no flower buds, meaning also there were no open flowers. There were no fruits, no ripe fruit, or no ripe recent fruit or seed drop. You can enter comments here at the bottom if you have anything extra to say, filling it in there by typing it in. You can also say you get to a plant and you want to have more information. You can hover over the phenophase for a little pop-up that gives you more information on the specific phenophase. So let's say we saw breaking leaf buds, leaves, increasing leaf size, no colored leaves yet and no falling leaves no flower buds, no open flowers, no pollen, no fruit, no ripe fruits, and no recent seed drop. Now, if I wasn't sure of something, if I wasn't necessarily sure if I saw increasing leaf size yet, I could always select that question mark. That's always a better answer. Scrolling down. So now I didn't see any hummingbirds here. You can see we've got a lot of phenophases on this hummingbirds. If you didn't see it and you don't want to sit here and click no, no, no for all of them, you can click circle all no here in the corner and then I'll just select no for everything. No hummingbirds, select all no. And again, select all no. Scrolling down here to the very bottom, you can click submit observations or enter more data. We're gonna click enter more data and it will ask us, do you wish to submit these observations before entering more? That means yes, you do in fact want to save what you just entered and enter more. So click yes, cancel or no would remove those observations entirely. So now here you can see these 
with a blue background means those data were submitted. So you can click here and submit your next day, or you can backdate it. Say I was out there last week, I can hit a, an old date, I can leave the time blank. You can say, yes, I saw young leaves, but no flowers, no open flowers, no fruits, no ripe fruits, or no seeds. Say I only had time to observe my jojoba, I could just submit that one, scroll down to the bottom, submit observations, and that will save. So now I have two entries here in blue. Those mean those have been submitted successfully. Now if you wanted to enter, go back and do edit old data, say you found something wrong that you transposed wrong or you read a yes that was supposed to be a no. You can scroll back using these blue arrows if you had several dates worth of data that you needed to go back, maybe a month or maybe several weeks or several days. But since I only have the two days here, it's luckily it's popped right here on the screen. We'll go back and edit. Say I did go back to this increasing leaf size. I did a little more research and I figured out, yes, that really was increasing leaf size. You can click the proper answer, and again, scroll down to submit. And you get the message, all observations were successfully saved. Now, if you wanted to scroll back down and double check, yes there, that is that yes circled here, so that has been successfully submitted. All right, so back to the observation deck. You've got your phenology calendar up here at the top. I've pre-programmed mine for a couple years ago. I had some cool information with some of the honey mesquites in a site up I was observing between my backyard and a Pima County trailhead, looking at the difference. We also have this tab for badges. This is cool where you can see the different achievements that you've unlocked in your account by different things you've observed, such as yes, no, maybes, Full circle, observing a whole yes, no, no, yes, no, phenophase within a given year. And you can also scroll over and see the ones that you haven't got yet grayed out. A little more information on those on the bottom. So this helps see what's possible as well as what you could do to help contribute. If you needed to edit your account details, such as changing a group, if you wanted to, if you found out you were associated with a new group that's in your area, you can go over here to My Account Details. You see your information listed here. You can click the Edit tab. If you needed to change your password, you could do it here. Otherwise, you could add a picture or a bio. If you scroll down here to the Partner Group section, this is where you would add a new partner if you found someone, something in your area that you wanted to observe at, we'll go down here. So these are where you would see all of our active groups. Like Lorianne said, there's over 400, so it is quite a long page. We'll, we'll go through it quickly. Scroll, scroll, scroll. We'll get down here to the Tucson Phenology Trail. So I am already a part of the Tucson Botanical Gardens but I'm also going to join the U of A Campus Arboretum. So you select that box next to the group that you want to participate in, scroll down here to save, it takes a minute to load your page, and it brings you back to your observation deck, where now you can scroll over here to my site, you can find the group you just joined. Now it's going to be kind of hard because I have so many on here. But here it is, U of A Campus Arboretum. So then you can see and access what is at that group. Again, I'm not an admin here, so I can't add it or add anything. But I can certainly enter observation data on their species. The, this group has two specific locations, so you can switch between the two of those. Once you know the different locations, you're welcome to observe it either. All right, so while we've got a couple minutes left, do we have any questions? Let's see. Um, I think there was a question about when you were entering observations, 
if you can go back and review your observations. I think you touched on that a little bit, but I don't yeah. know if you have a group where you had I do have more some personal than two. Yeah. yeah, where you can review it. All right. So you collect your site, you go back to the enter observations. So now when you get here, you can scroll back through the three columns at a time, one column at a time, or jump back a specific number. Say you wanted to go back 10 entries. For now, we'll just scroll back three by three. So you may get a window that says the previous observation records were created using a different set of phenophases. This just means we advanced on the protocols or changed some wording, and it will tell you the different species on your list that protocols changed. That's all right, just keep scrolling back. So you'll see, last time I was at the site was 2014. So you can keep scrolling, see I've got 6.4, 6.14, 6.19. Scrolling back here. You can keep looking and then you can review them this way by seeing on this page, looking at the data here and seeing if that makes sense. If you Again, if you needed to edit or change something or delete it altogether. If you needed to delete a record, you could go here. If everything was wrong or the date was wrong, you, we don't allow you to change the date. So if you entered the date wrong, you do have to delete the record entirely and then submit the new record with the correct date. The other way to review your data is back from your observation deck. Again, downloading this Excel file of all your data. However, yes, that is everything you've ever submitted. So if you are just looking for a specific site or a specific group, you may have better luck going to that group or that specific site and sorting back through those blue arrows at the top. Great answer. I hope that helps. I think so. Um, two other questions we have. Um, one was on the, when you're adding species or animal species to your list okay. at your site, I don't think that there is a search bar to search the species. Um, no, not on this page. Yeah, you have right. to scroll through okay. here. You I do thought. have the search for state, so you could filter it down a little bit. Or if you're specifically interested in only, say you're only interested in birds, you could sort by birds, but you still have this big kind of scroll list. You can sort by common name or specific name by clicking on the either one. It will sort alphabetically then. Say if you know the scientific name better, you could sort by scientific name and find it that way. So I made a note that maybe that's an enhancement that we can consider in the future. Um, another question that we had was about actual observations. And uh, Annette says, do you want simple observations about birds that were spotted for the first time and when they return from their migration? If she has that information recorded on paper but won't be back to the sites again, but they're on her way to work. So I think there are two questions within that question, actually. Um, one is, that if you have observations about presence and absence data, which is you could answer yes or no to that active individual question for animals, you could backdate it on the observation Correct. Deck, like Shara or Sarah was just sharing with you on um, there, you can enter the date that you saw it. So I, a lot of times people do ask us if they can go back and enter old data into the database, and the answer to that is yes as long as you were following the same protocols when you collected the observation as what our definitions are. And um, I think the second part of that question about um, observing birds for the first time and then when they return for migration, I'm not sure if you're asking if you have to fill out all of the questions to the protocol okay, there or if you just can say yes or no to the one. You can definitely just say yes or no to the one. You don't have to answer all of the, the protocol questions. But you would have to set up a specific site and add those species to that site before you would able to say yes or no. Yep, that's a good point. So you would have to make a site uh, for the you birds yeah. where you saw them on your way to work, and then you could add those observations there. That's the difference with Nature's Notebook is everything is attached to a geographic location through a site, and so you'd have to create that first before you could enter an observation for the bird. Another question we have is about estimating percentages. Do we have tips on that? Yes, we do. And we're not going to actually get into that right now. But what I can do in the 
um, question box here is give you a link to some quiz information that we have online. We have an online quiz you can take that helps you work through estimating percentages. So let me chat that to you in a minute and then everybody can just have that accessible. And the other thing to say is if you're not comfortable with entering the percentage data, then you don't have to enter it. You can leave it blank until you feel comfortable with how you've done that. So also here, I just navigated quickly over. Under the Observe menu, we have this Learn How to Observe. You can come here. This has our Learn How to Observe handbook broken down into separate steps and sections. You can click through here, choose a site, gives you some information on how to do that. Um, things like recording your actual observations, submitting online. Basically, this is kind of what we went over, but this is a printed version. You can also learn how to do it at a group. It's a little different just because you have some, you get a little bit of a shortcut. We also here on the sidebar have the online course, the how-to course. We have some materials. Our botany primer is a great resource. We also have our phenophase primer section one that's out that helps a lot. We have our basic botany and intensity quizzes, which Lorianne was talking about, our nature's notebook nuggets, which are a little more in-depth on specific phenophase questions that we've gotten from observers. And if you're always unsure, we have our FAQs page, which definitely answers a wide array of questions that you guys could have. Excellent. Thanks for pulling that up, Sarah. You're so welcome. yeah, that's on the Learn to Observe page. And I just chatted the link into the question box. If you guys can see that, it's on there. Any other questions? I think we may have covered everything that people have asked so far. I'll pause for a minute and see if anybody. Yeah, so if anybody has any last minute questions. And if you guys maybe go through this on your own and something is still unclear to you or you have a secondary question, feel free to email me and I will get back with you um, and try and work things out. We will get you set up best as we can. Um, and if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear that as well. And I'm going to type in our email addresses here. Yeah, mine is Sarah, S-A-R-A, at USANPN.org, and Lorianne's is Lorianne at USANPN.org. Great. Good. All right, so if that's everything, if we got a couple questions by email, um, I will put this recording up online hopefully by the end of today, if not Monday. But with that said, I think maybe we'll end five minutes early here on our Friday. Sounds so I good. hope everybody has a great weekend. Thank you for joining us, and happy observing. Thanks, guys.